Long before Sony, Sega, and even SNK released dedicated CD-based consoles, there was the Philips CDI. Released in the early 1990s as a way to use the emerging CD-ROM technology as a vessel for education and reference materials, this expensive console was aimed directly at parents who were in the market for a set-top box that did more than just play mindless video games. Philips was gambling on edutainment, hoping for a future where you were just as likely to take a virtual tour through an art museum as you were to shoot down demons in a first-person action game. In the eight years that Philips kept the CDI dream alive, there were a total of 208 games released for the system. Electronic Gaming Monthly managed to review 13 of them. Okay, so yeah, that's not very many. In fact, that's only 6% of the library. Now, to be fair to EGM, there were a lot of systems vying for attention at that time, and only so many critics on hand. What's more, the CDI just never caught on, selling only a million units and focusing more on the edutainment titles that EGM just usually ignored. Instead of dwelling on the games the magazine skipped over, I instead want to highlight the 13 titles they actually bothered to review. What we're going to do is count down the best and worst CDI games using Electronic Gaming Monthly's own words and scores. There's no editorializing here, we're just going to focus on what the critics said about these games back when they first came out. Come, join me for this incredibly niche episode of EGM Ranks The Philips CDI. Today you're watching TV and this guy says... It's CDI, friends, the next generation CD player that works with your TV. And you'd say... But I have a CD player. And your mom says... No, dear, CDI works with your television. You'd probably feel pretty dumb and maybe even fake it like you'd already experienced the ultimate in games, movies, music, and more. Trust me, babe, I know about this CDI stuff. Now get into CDI, starting at $2.99 with $200 of free stuff. Up first, at number 13, we have Who Shot Johnny Rock? Unless you have the American Laser Games Game Gun, you probably won't get very far in this move the cursor and shoot game. As was the case with the earlier Mad Dog McCree, the control pad is just too slow. For the CDI system, Johnny Rock suffers from inexplicably substandard graphics. The, the images are so blurry that you can't tell what's going on half the time as well as the frustrating gameplay. There's plenty of action, and the whodunit aspect of the game is welcome, but the technical aspects hamper the overall product. Number 12, Kether. I really don't know what to make of this game. Just what kind of game is Kether anyway? Well, it's a shooter, it's a puzzle game, it's a role-playing game, it's many different things. It's good from a variety of standpoints, but I wish that they stayed in only one category. I thought the graphics are probably the best I've seen, and the sound and music are top-notch, but the pace was too slow. It's just okay. Number 11, Lemmings. It's getting hard to rate Lemmings since I played the original on PC what seems like a lifetime ago. Since then, it's gone to every platform in varying degrees. Basically, I love the game, but it's getting a bit old. After playing Lemmings 2 and others, this one just seems a bit weak. It's an excellent translation, but I must admit that I'm getting bored with it. If you've never played it, it is a great game, but it's been done to death. Number 10, Lil Divil. Lil Divil is a cute game for the CDI. The cute little demons, humorous antics, and animation are really entertaining. This is all due to having some of the best graphics anywhere, coupled with superb CD stereo sound. There were some things that I didn't like, such as the play control, which seemed to lag when I wanted to execute a particular action. This made fighting bosses very difficult, but it still has some entertaining value. Number 9, Hotel Mario. The game sounds simple enough, go through several levels while banishing Koopa Troopas and other enemies. However, this is quite addicting stuff, and it is strongly recommended that you use a joypad for max enjoyment. Number 8, Axis and Allies. 
Axis and Allies is one of the more comprehensive and complete wartime simulators ever made. The live action stock footage and sounds are amazing and make this a game any World War II buff won't want to miss. This one covers everything and you can practically make your own hypothetical war scenario. Number 7. Dragon's Lair 2 When Dragon's Lair first came out in the arcades, I totally got into it. But now it's just another full motion video game and there really isn't much interaction here. All you do is point in a direction or press a button to use Dirk's sword. Oh hum, it really isn't much of a game. And yes, the scenes are straight out of the arcade, but many times the machine's limits make the scenes look too blocky. It's a one-shot deal. Number 6. Dragon's Lair This version of the Laserdisc arcade classic is without a doubt the best version on any platform. Everything from the arcade has been directly ported over. All the scenes and music are here. Another thing that makes Dragon's Lair so good is the fine control of Dirk, which allows players to choose his moves with ease. On the downside, the CD access time is a nuisance, breaking you away from the game for too long. Number 5. Caesar's World of Boxing Like most Philips CDI games, Caesar's World of Boxing has superb graphics. But in terms of an actual boxing match, it's better to call it a simulation where strategy is more important than punching speed. Easily the best boxing game yet. Number 4. Space Ace The CDI is really becoming a strong contender with games like this. Space Ace is a blast to play and truly faithful to the original coin-op. The digital video is perfect and the game control is great. Space Ace can be difficult to play at first until you get the timing down. However, after beating the game a few times, the challenge is gone. If you're an owner of the CDI, you don't want to pass up this perfect translation. Number 3. NFL Hall of Fame Even though this is not a hard-hitting action game, it is nice to know more about the history of football. The layout of the Hall of Fame is something to see. The actual video footage of players is cool and should not be missed. The CD will broaden your knowledge of the history of football and then some. Hey, it doesn't hurt to learn more every day. Number 2. The Seventh Guest Wow! If you've never heard of The Seventh Guest before, then you're in for a shock. The graphics are simply mind-blowing with beautifully rendered scenes of the Stoff Mansion. While simply walking around and playing puzzles at various points seems boring, just fire this puppy up and you're going to be hooked. The music adds a creepy side to the game, so I wouldn't suggest playing it with the lights off. It's a great game with no real replay value. And finally, Electronic Gaming Monthly's number one CDI game, Burn Cycle. Just sitting down and playing Burn Cycle for 10 minutes isn't the way to enjoy it. It must be played like a role-playing game, which it does a nice job of emulating. The characters, story, and graphics are all top-notch. The stingy time limit can be bothersome, but really adds to the suspense. This is one game you'll definitely find yourself wrapped up in. If you don't have a CDI by now, Burn Cycle will definitely change your mind. Hey, thanks for watching me talk about the CDI reviews. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we have a whole playlist full of these EGM ranked episodes, including other systems like the 32X, Jaguar, Lynx, and even the Master System. We've also tackled game franchises like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Batman, and Castlevania, Mega Man, Street Fighter, and oh boy, so many more. Just go and check out the playlist, you'll love it. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is the most obscure game or system that you own? Look, I know a lot of you don't have a favorite CDI game, so what's the point in even asking? Just tell me about the obscure games or systems that you own. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back later this week with reviews and more. I know that's kind of vague. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.